sublimation t-shirts for beginners. Let's go. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to sublimate from beginning to end. So I'm gonna walk you guys all the way through the steps and all of the supplies that you guys are gonna need. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Today I'm gonna to be using the Christmas sublimation bundle. So what we have done is we have created an amazing Christmas sublimation bundle for you guys that is only $19. So this is almost a $300 value. So if you guys are just now getting into sublimation, this is going to be a perfect bundle to get you guys started as it includes tons and tons of PNGs. So we're gonna be using this bundle inside. I really love all of these colors with the plaid and the red. They are absolutely gorgeous. And then we're also going to be using this one right here with the gnome truck. So you guys can see they've put it on a pillow. This would be perfect for all sorts of fun things outside of t-shirts, you can do pillows and coffee mugs and all of the fun things. So those are the two files that I'm gonna be using today. Let's go ahead and start off with the supplies that I'm using today and the supplies that you're gonna need whenever it comes to sublimating your very first t-shirt. So when it comes to sublimation, you really want to strive for 100% polyester. So for example, Cricut does sell 100% polyester t-shirts. They're already ready to go for you. And what I love about these ones is you can usually find them locally at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Target, all sorts of fun places, as well as online. It just makes it so much easier. They are a little bit more expensive if you bought from somebody like, say for example, clothing um, shop online. That's where I like to buy my Gildan soft style t-shirts I'm fixing to talk about. So like I said, I do highly recommend the Cricut brand because they're ready to go for you and you're gonna get the most vibrant out of your sublimation. Now, the next question that we get all of the time is can you sublimate something that is not 100% polyester? And and the answer is yes. And the second question is, can we sublimate on color? So you can sublimate on color, but it does need to be a lighter shade of color. Um, and then you can sublimate on something that's around 50-50. So you want it to be 50% cotton and 50% polyester to be able to achieve and keep some of those colors. So what's gonna happen is when you go to wash this, you will lose just a tiny bit, but what you see when you press it is pretty much what you get, but you may lose a minute because it's only 50% polyester, so you're getting half of that vibrancy. But to me personally, I still think they are very good. Now, the next thing that you can do, a lot of fun things. A lot of people do bleach, so you can actually um, sublimate and then bleach your t-shirt. We have done several of those, so definitely make sure you guys check that out on the channel. There's a lot of different things that you guys can do, or you can simply use them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys today on 100% polyester versus a colored t-shirt with a 50-50 blend, just so you guys can see what those are gonna look like. Next, you're gonna want a heat press. So you really want to, when it comes to making t-shirts, you really wanna get a 15 by 15, um, more industrial style heat press. So for example, I love these stalls A to Z swing away. I really just enjoy the swing away compared to a clamshell. Um, and I'll have all of the things I'm talking about today linked down below for quick and easy access. Um, but there's all sorts of different ones on the market. But when it comes to t-shirts, because of sizes, you really wanna strive for that 15 by 15. But today I wanna show you guys that you can achieve this using something like the Cricut Easy Press, and you can do it with something like the nine by nine and press it in a few separate presses to accomplish that. So you're gonna need a heat press. And once again, the one that I recommend when it comes to t-shirts is a 15 by 15. Next up is what sublimation printer is right for you. Whether it is converting an Epson printer and installing your very own inks, there's a lots of them on the market. I do recommend the StarCraft or whether you guys are gonna go straight for a sawgrass printer, an SG500 or an SG1000 using those Sublajet inks. They also even have one by Caesar as well. So for me personally, when I first started sublimating back in like 2016, 2017, I jumped straight to a sawgrass. They didn't have a whole lot of converting. They used to, but it was a whole mess. The printer that I'm always going to recommend that I started using when I first started sublimating back in around 2016, 2017 is the Sawgrass printer. Now, which one should you purchase first? That just depends on the size of t-shirts or what product you're making. So there is the Sawgrass SG500 that's gonna allow you to go up to eight and a half by 14. And then you're gonna have the Sawgrass SG1000 that's gonna go all the way up to a 13 by 19 and get some really big prints. So just depending on what size that you're doing. So I always say if you can afford the Sawgrass SG1000, 
which is very expensive, um, go straight for it and don't waste your time because it's going to last you for years. So I've had mine forever. Now, if you can't afford to start off with that Sawgrass SG-1000, definitely starting off with the Sawgrass SG-500 is still going to allow you to achieve what you need to. So I'm going to show you that today. I'm going to show you guys printing on an eight and a half by 11 versus the 11 by 17, just to show you what you can still accomplish with the Sawgrass SG-500. Now you may be somebody that is very frugal and you want to really be careful with what you're spending when it comes to a printer. As a Sawgrass SG-500 can cost you right out the gate, right around $600, but that does include the inks, where converting an Epson can cost you around two to $300, not including the ink, getting started. So you definitely can get a whole lot cheaper start with the Epson, but there is a few things that are a little bit troublesome. You don't have something like the Sawgrass, they have a print manager that controls that ink and how much ink you need whenever it comes to a t-shirt versus like a hard substrate. And you're not gonna get that with the Epson. As well as the Sawgrass, it continuously cleans itself so you don't have clogged lines, whereas the Epson is not gonna do that and you're gonna need to do those manually. But you could definitely achieve those. So once again, just depending on which way you wanna go. So if you do decide to do the Epson, I will have one that I recommend down below. I do recommend going with the StarCraft ink. I have put several of them head to head and the best one for me was the StarCraft. Next up, let's talk about paper. So one of my favorite sublimation papers is True Picks Classic. It's been one of my absolute favorites, but you may love something else. So feel free to use whichever one you like best. But when it comes to paper sizes, we have eight and a half by 11, 11 by 17 and 13 by 19. Now with the Sawgrass SG500, as well as most of your Epson printers, you're also going to be able to print on an eight and a half by 14. So you're gonna be able to see how much length that you guys are gonna get. So you guys are gonna get a little bit more length there, but not the width. So you do have both of these options whenever it comes to the Sawgrass SG500, or like I said, a basic standard Epson printer. So these are the two prints that you guys are gonna have. A lot of people fail to mention the eight and a half by 14. And this is gonna allow you to get a little bit wider with your designs if you're putting it on your t-shirt here or a little bit longer as well. Now, whenever it comes to the Sawgrass SG-1000 or your bigger Epson printers, you're able to print all of these. Now, when it comes to that 13 by 19, you're going to have to purchase a bypass tray. So it's an extra attachment that you're going to hook to your printer that's going to allow you to get really, really big prints like this. So this is perfect for those bigger t-shirts and bigger projects. For example, when you get up in like 2X t-shirts and all of those things, this is absolutely perfect for that. So like I said, your Sawgrass SG-1000 is going to allow you to do really, really big prints. Now, whenever it comes to making your t-shirts, you're going to be able to really get away with using an eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 17, which I'm going to show you guys today. All right, last up is our supply. So the supplies that I recommend to get right out the gate for making your t-shirts is going to be a paper trimmer. This is gonna come in handy. I really like nice straight lines. So if you're gonna need any sort of nice straight lines whenever it comes to it, I definitely highly recommend getting a paper trimmer. Now, next up, I also recommend getting your heat tape. One of my favorites is the Cricut heat tape because I like to have small tape holders like this, but you could definitely purchase bigger rolls like this and then you can place them on another little um, dispenser. I have one of my favorites as well. I don't have it with me in the studio today. You can turn it and you can attach several different pieces and it's super affordable from Amazon. So once again, whether you're using a big one or a small one, I really just like the access of having something small and ready to go. So heat tape and then heat tape dispenser. And then you're going to need a lint roller. So a lint roller is very important. If you don't lint roll, you can get these little um, blue dots that show up on your t-shirt. So definitely make sure you never skip that step. And then last, but not least is parchment paper. So you can definitely purchase these in the roll or the sheets. I do love to purchase them in the sheets. It just makes it so much easier to work with. And that is everything you're gonna need to get started. So let's go ahead and head on over to Canvas so I can show you over there how I get ready for my prints. Now, a couple different options whenever it comes to working with these files right out the gate. Once you download them, if you have a Sawgrass SG500 or 1000, you should have a folder on your desktop that looks like this. It says Sawgrass Smart Folder. All you're gonna do is take that file that you're using, 
take it over there, drag and drop it, and you're going to pop up that Sawgrass Print Manager, and from here, you're just gonna set all of those settings. So, for example, you can see warning, one or more of your jobs, you know, does not fit, and all you have to do is go to jobs, and then from here, you can adjust that. So as you can see, that easy, this one's ready to go. You would go back to materials, set it to, for example, polyester, and then set your paper and all of that. And then you're just simply going to hit print. Next up for the Epson, it is just as easy. All you're simply gonna do is find the design that you're using, double click to open it. You're gonna come up here to tools, and then we are going to flip it horizontally because you wanna make sure that you mirror it right away before you send it to the printer. You're gonna come up to file, go to print, and then now let's pretend that this says Epson because I don't have my Epson printer plugged in, but it would say Epson. And then if I wanna size it up, I would come down to scale. So for example, I would type in 170 and this would look good to me and I would go ahead and hit print. So it's that easy to print it with your Epson as well. Now jumping straight over here to Canva, you can use the free version and all you simply have to do is drag and drop your design in here. So I've already set up a blank canvas to be eight and a half by 11. So if you were wanting this to be 11 by 17, you would set it to be 11 by 17. So I'm gonna show you guys resizing that in just a bit. So what you're gonna do is just simply drag and drop your design in here, or you can go right here to where it says upload and bring it in that way. So once you bring in your file, what we're gonna go ahead and do is rotate this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this here and rotate. And then I'm gonna grab these pieces here and just size it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that until I am happy with it. And then I can center this up because you see those little, um, bars here we can do that until we get it nice and centered so you can see that is absolutely perfect centered which is what i want so i'm happy with this once you're happy all you're simply going to go ahead and do is hit share and then we're going to go to download and then just hit download again and it's going to send it straight over to the computer all right so as you can see this is what we have so i'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this into that sawgrass smart folder and then i'm going to go ahead and get ready to print it now since i've already set it at that eight and a half by eleven you can see it's it's ready to go and then sawgrass is going to go ahead and mirror that for us it's already set at polyester so we're ready to hit print now I wanna go ahead and point out today that mine is plugged in. You guys can see my USB cord here. So the older models of the Sawgrass printers, the 400 and the 800, I believe you had to plug them in. Now I've had recently some issues with my Wi-Fi, and so you can simply plug it in, but these are also Wi-Fi as well. And just like that, you have your really fun design. So as you can see, if you used the Sawgrass SG500, um, you would get a perfect print here. So the ones that are gonna go horizontal like this are perfect for an eight and a half by 11. So let's go ahead and print out the next one. Now to resize this, so we want to do an 11 by 17. I'm going to go ahead and go to resize. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and do 11 by 17. And then we're going to go ahead and hit copy and resize. Now what I like to do is drop my screen down, move it over, and then that way I can drag and drop this right inside of here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this back up here really quick. All right, so here we go. So we're working with that 11 by 17. Now this does not mean I want to stretch it all the way across here. I just want a really nice size. So one thing I wanna point out with a file like this, so you see how we have all of this excess space? What I like to do is I go ahead and bring in these lines because what's happening is Canva is measuring from all of that open space. So what we're gonna do is just bring these as close as we can without cutting anything off. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. So now, when we go to size this, we're sizing it straight from the truck. Now that's why I brought this over to Canva instead of sending it straight over because Sawgrass or your Epson's gonna wanna print it like this. So we're gonna go ahead and just get it right up here and size this until I'm happy with it. All right, so this design in particular, so if you grab your corner here, you can usually get the dimensions there. So I can see that this one is perfect for me. So it's around 11 by 12. So you can see much bigger than an eight and a half by 11. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna download it and I'm gonna send it to my printer. All right, so let's go ahead and prep this one for the 11 by 17. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to layout and then we're gonna go to page size and I'm gonna change that to 11 by 17, which is right here. So now you can see that perfectly popped up for me. Now I have mine set to center so it centers my design, but you can feel free to do whatever you like. So I'm happy with this, everything looks good. It's got it mirrored for me. So we're gonna go ahead and get ready to print. So a few things that you need to do to your printer is, you wanna go ahead and open the bottom. Inside of here, you're going to have some little green levers. So we're gonna go ahead and move all of those around and extend it so that way we can fit that 11 by 17 inside. I'm 
I'm gonna remove my smaller paper, and now we're gonna go ahead and load that 11 by 17. So you don't have to load a bunch of sheets at one time. You can just load one at a time if you want to. Now the way to tell which side is which is if you fold it over, this one in particular has a, like a yellow tinge on one side, so I wanna have that white side face down. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and close this, and then we're gonna close the lid. All right, so now we are ready to hit print. Now while that is printing out, I've already got my Cricut Easy Press set at 385 for 40 seconds. As you guys can see, this is a really nice print. The colors are gorgeous and it is a really nice size. So that just gives us so much more space to work with compared to that eight and a half by 11. You guys can really see that there. Now the next thing to keep in mind when it comes to sublimation is your prints are gonna come in lighter than whenever you actually press them. So once you press them, that's when the colors are gonna come to life. So also keep that in mind as well. All right, so let's go ahead and press the 100% polyester first. We're gonna be using that eight and a half by 11 so let's go ahead and do that now so what we're gonna do I don't need to trim this one with my paper trimmer it is absolutely ready to go so that's one thing I really like about the eight and a half by 11 as well so we're just gonna go ahead and take that Cricut pad and I'm gonna go ahead and spread out my t-shirt Step one, we're gonna use that lint roller to remove any excess lint or debris. You definitely do not wanna skip this step. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pull out any sort of moisture and just smooth everything down. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that t-shirt cool back down because if not, it's, it's going to activate my ink. So just kind of let it cool back down. In the meantime, to find your center, since I centered this absolutely perfect in that paper, I can simply fold this in half because it is centered. And then what you're gonna do is we're going to bring it down around three to four fingers down. So something about like this, and I'm lining it up with that neck tag. Then after that, we're just gonna take some of that heat tape. Two pieces is honestly good enough. So we're gonna go ahead and get one on this side, one here, and then we're gonna cover it with that parchment paper. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cover that just like so. Now, once again, I'm using the Cricut 9x9, so I'm actually gonna press this design here twice. 385 for 40 seconds, so we're gonna hit go, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this side, and then the next. All right, so we are getting to our last few seconds. We're gonna go ahead and lift this up remove that parchment paper. And what you wanna do is grab a corner and just swiftly peel just like that. So look at how nice this came out. So once again, yes, I do highly recommend if you wanna make this super simple, especially if you're gonna have a t-shirt business, go for that 15 by 15 press because you're just gonna be pressing once, one and done. But once again, if you are an at-home crafter, you can still accomplish this, whether once again, even if it is a small business or a big business or whatever, you can still do this with your Cricut Easy Press, 385 for 40 seconds. You guys can see how vibrant those colors are on 100% polyester. So once I throw this in the wash, it's gonna outlast the t-shirt, honestly. It's not gonna fade, crack, you can't fill it. That's the really cool thing about sublimation as well. And those colors are not going to fade. So what you see is what you get. And I really think it looks so good with those black raglan sleeves. So, so cute. All right, so let me go ahead and show you guys on a 50-50 with color. For this next one, so this is our 11 by 17 on the 50-50 as well as a color. So what we want to do is take that paper trimmer. This is where that paper trimmer comes in. But for a design like this, a pair of scissors honestly would be good enough as well. So we're just going to go ahead and line this up and trim it. All right, so now that we have that size down, I've got a couple different colors here. So I really think this is gonna look better on the green. I'm thinking Christmas, so I have a red and a green here. Now, the other thing that you have to pay attention to when you get these 50-50, I am using the Gildan Soft Style. And when you choose those colors, make sure that it says Heather. So it may say red Heather, purple Heather. Make sure it says that Heather because those are what's going to work best as well. These are so soft. I really, really love these. And they're perfect for the bleach t-shirt as well. All right, so let's go ahead and flip it over and get ready to press. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pull out that moisture and go ahead and remove the lid. Same thing, we're gonna fold it in half to figure out where we're going. And then I'm gonna come down around three or four fingers from that neck tag. So we're gonna go ahead and center that up and add our tape.
We're gonna take that parchment paper again. Now for this particular design, the truck is like this. So I'm gonna be able to press one, two, and three. So I'm gonna go ahead and get up here. I'm gonna press it 385 for 40 seconds and continue on. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and lift that out of the way. So you just wanna double check, look at it, make sure everything looks like it's been pressed. If it has, same thing, we're gonna peel quickly. And there you go. So you guys can see what this looks like on a colored t-shirt. Yes, you can see it. Is it more bright and bold on a white t-shirt? Absolutely. But if you turn around and you sublimate this and you go around this design right here, once again, we have tutorials here on the channel, this is going to become white and then it's gonna make those colors pop, the true color that you guys seen on the computer. So as you guys can see, this is what it looks like. I definitely think it looks a whole lot better whenever you guys add the bleach. It looks so, so cool. But once again, you could definitely leave it like this and it's pretty much gonna stay like this. You may lose a very minute amount, but it's gonna stay like this. So you can see on that 100% polyester, it is super bright and it just absolutely pops. That's how easy it is to sublimate from start to finish and you are good to go. Now, if you guys are creating your very first t-shirt, we want to see. So make sure you guys join our Facebook community group. You can find it in the description below. And so that way we can check it out and give you guys some loves and likes. So if you guys enjoyed this, please hit the like button down below and subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one.